if AJ does overcome and win, that just proves to everybody, he becomes three time a heavyweight champion of the world, that this guy is the real deal. Because whenever he's had adversity, he's come back from it. So there's so much to be gained and there's so much to be lost from this fight. Sorry, bro. That's all right, man. Put it this way, yeah. If AJ wins this, yeah, man, listen, I'm not chatting about him again. Even if he loses to Fury, bro, I'll be like, listen, bro, I respect you. Because... Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> yes, people, another edition of Lights Around Table Discussions where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guy ST in the building. How are you doing, sir? No, I'm all good, man. Big, big, big fight coming up, man. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, it's the one that everyone's looking forward to. It's the most highly anticipated fight of the year. We see the rematch between Usyk and AJ for all, well, most of the belts anyway. Um, so ST and I are going to be going through it, talking about what's happened previously, looking ahead to what we believe is going to happen in this fight and all of that good stuff. But as usual, before we start, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Get the likes up, get the subscriptions up, and I say all the time, share, share, share. We are here, and don't forget to join our social media pages as well. Links are in the description. As you know, people, Boxing Talk is back. AJ, well, no, AJ is not the main man, so it'll be Usyk versus AJ to taking place this Saturday in Saudi Arabia. It is for the IBF, WBA, and WBO heavyweight titles. Um... Listen and the ring as well. Oh yeah, ring belt magazine as well. As uh, as yeah. we know, Tyson Fury is retired ish. Um, he gave up the ring magazine belt, so that's going to be on the line also. But listen, at the end of the day, it's heavyweight boxing. It's the blue ribbon event event of boxing, and we are looking forward to see what is going to happen. Um, St, let's. Yeah. Wind the clocks back a bit. Let's go back to the first fight. People, if you didn't know, Usyk won um, on unanimous points decision. Um, all three judges scored the fight to him. Um, completely outboxed AJ um, in that fight. Um, proved a lot of doubt was wrong and proved that he is a real deal when it comes to heavyweight boxing because obviously he moved up from cruiserweight to heavyweight and we know that some people don't believe that cruiserweights can be proper heavyweights, but we've seen it with David Hay, we've seen it with Evander Holyfield, and now we've seen it with Alexander, Alexander Usyk. Um, for you, bro, just that... the Number one, the first fight. Um, what did we learn? What did we learn about AJ in that first fight? What did we see in terms of his flaws um, in that first fight and what was the reason why he lost that first fight? Um, well, first of all, um, he wasn't utilising his jab as a weapon. He was just flicking it up there and Yusek, um, as clever as he is, was countering over his um, lead left. Two, we noticed that AJ has stamina issues clearly at this moment in time. But then he's fast in fighting a faster cruiserweight, you know, a cruiserweight turned heavyweight, someone who's faster, feet or foot, a lot more intelligence. And also, we learned that in terms of actually boxing IQ, I think we all know this, knew this, but Joshua is not at least six level in terms of IQ. This man's been fighting for too long, 25, 30 years. Like, Joshua has only been boxing since he was, what, 19? Yeah, something so, like that. So that's still relatively quite late and you can see the level in actual skills in, in terms of them and we noticed that Joshua's uh, IQ doesn't match up to uh, Usyk so he thought that so he ended up fighting the wrong fight um, his gas tank is questionable um, Joshua doesn't have the best chin his chin is not terrible but it's not the best mm. and those were three great owning things that I saw saw in the fight, and there's no head movement because what was happening is that um, 
uh, there were times when Joshua was using his jab, but when his uh, lead left was down, it's easy for Usyk to counter. But what Usyk did was pivot, and because Joshua has no head movement, that left hand was landing all the time. Um, and that's why, that's where the deficiencies in Joshua's game is. No, hundred percent. Like I can't, I can't say any fairer than that. And um, I think that Usyk exposed everything that Joshua didn't have on that night. Um, the fact that the smaller man established the jab, the smaller man kept boxed you at length and kept you um, at a distance. And then when you did get close, it still fell into his hands because obviously him being a smaller fighter it brings AJ into range. And then, obviously, the straight left, which was landing all night long. And that is essentially a long, to coincide with everything that you said, the reason that AJ lost, lost this fight. Um, we fast forward now, and we look ahead to this upcoming fight, the rematch, obviously. There was a rematch clause in the contract. And that's why this fight is going ahead. Um, one of the biggest things that AJ did is something that we've all been screaming for. Um, since, some people have been screaming for it since the Klitschko fight in terms of AJ's trainers and the way how he goes into fights and his game plans and whatnot. And he's been exposed. The Klitschko fight was the first time. We, well, actually, Dillian White was the first time we really saw AJ exposed. Klitschko... Um, obviously, the Mexican Homer Simpson um, completely exposed him by beating him. And then, obviously, Povetkin as well. And then, finally, Usyk with the nail in the coffin. So, how massive is it that AJ has now finally decided that he's going to leave... Um, what's my man's name? Robert McCracken. Robert McCracken. And now, um, ST, I'm going to let you explain to the people the trainer that he is now with and the, but how important is it how important is it was is was it that AJ changed camp and got someone else in his ear? He should have done it a long time ago, if I'm being honest. After personally, after when he um because we were seeing deficiencies for a while now. Mm. I think after that Klitschko fight, personally for me, I would have changed something if I was in his camp. Uh, for all you guys, um, Robert McCracken was previously um, Joshua's um, coach, but at the GB setup. So Robert McCracken is head of the GB setup, hence why the relationship with Rob and um, Joshua was so strong. But mm. as we said about the deficiencies of Joshua, he wasn't improving on that, and they got semi-exposed in the William, I mean, the Dillian White fight, and um, several fights later. They just more his more deficiencies were getting glaring, and I didn't don't see didn't see any improvement. However, he's gone with a trainer, a well-renowned trainer called Robert Garcia, former featherweight IBF champion, very good fighter in his own right, part of a, a dynasty. Trained his brother, um, four division champion Mikey Garcia, now retired. Um, trained Brandon Rios champion. Um, what, trained, what weight was Brandon Rios champion at? Was it what well, weight? No, it was 135. Okay. Um, he's trained Margrito, who was a champion. He's trained, um, who else? Uh, obviously, Mikey Garcia, Maidana. Maidana. Maidana was one of his very good trainer. Mm -hmm. Jose Ramirez, currently, who's in Josh Wait, um, who, who lost to Josh Taylor. He's trained, he's been trained, he's with uh, Leo Santa Cruz, he's been um, trained against the Ninito Donair, he's trained for a long time. So he's a very, I think he's a very good choice. Mm. You know what I mean? Solid, solid trainer, very underrated. We only have the Rogers, the Floyd, um, the Roger Mayweathers, the Floyd Mayweather seniors and mm -hmm. the Virgil Hunters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel this guy is in that league. He doesn't get the credit he deserves if I'm being very honest because he turns average fighters into good fighters, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that's a basically Robert Garcia. He's well renowned. He would he's real known in the boxing circles. So it was I was at first when I thought um, when um, he decided to choose Robert, I was thinking, wow, I didn't expect it. 
because they're completely um you would you would never associate like um Anthony Joshua with Robert Garcia as a trainer because of the sales that his fighters trains but I think the reason why he's done it because one thing about um Robert Garcia he lacks effective pressure and he he would want um Joshua to bust that Instead, you will not try and get Joshua to box with Usyk. It doesn't make sense. So what you're trying to do is, is trying to get Joshua to that street mentality, mm. the one that he used, to, the one that he was fighting before he fought. Then you know the aggressiveness. That's yeah. what he want to get back to it because he want he want him to physically dominate him. And I think it's a. I understand why Joshua has chosen him, and he's maintained his um, other guy Angel Fernandez. I think Angel Fernandez is good. But I think the reason why he's maintained it is because I think even though um, him and um, Robert McCracken were having, I think, issues in the sense that they had differing opinions. And to be fair, Robert McCracken is not a horrible coach, but there's a ceiling with him. Yeah, Whereas 100%. Angel Fernandez can learn more of something than Robert Garcia. It'd be good. Also, they know the language, so they can communicate to each other in Spanish. That's another important thing people don't mention. Yeah, and they can help say stuff to Joshua and stuff like that. And you know, I think it's a very strategic, very smart actually. But we'll all we'll we'll know we'll know when the fight happens. You know what I mean? So that's a bit of an OBB. No, no, hundred percent. And people that that's some inside knowledge into Robert Garcia and the reason as to why. Because people will just say, "Oh, AJ changed trainer. Like, who is this guy? Blah blah blah. This is the information that you need." And and as ST said, it is a very smart move for AJ. I, I can't see it being a long-term move, no. but for this fight in particular, I think it's a smart move because he needs to he needs to move away from the trying to outbox Usyk. It's about shithousery, roughhousing. He's gonna have to bully and use his size, use his height, and use his strength to try and dominate Usyk, make it uncomfortable for him, give him something different to think about. And um, the most important thing is try and get Usyk out of there because you and I both know if this fight goes 12 rounds, there's only going to be one winner, and that is Usyk. So I give AJ... I think AJ's probably got about six to eight rounds to try and get Usyk out of there. And eight is being generous. I think he's got six rounds to try and roughhouse and bully and dominate and let Usyk feel his power. Because as much as Usyk outboxed AJ, Usyk hurt AJ, um, Usyk made AJ look like an average fighter. When you look at Usyk's face, you can see that AJ was touching him and that wasn't even power punches and his face was marked up. So we can only imagine what would happen if AJ um, gets some power punches going and lets Usyk actually feel his power? Because at the end of the day, AJ has to look at it like this. I am the natural heavyweight. As Lennox Lewis always, always said, the bigger man will always beat the smaller man when it comes to boxing as long as he does the right things. So these are all, the, I think he's reverting back to basics. I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm the natural heavyweight. This is what I'm going to do. And it's lights out boxing that um, AJ is going to be trying to do on Saturday. Um, and he said it himself. He said it himself. He's, he's, AJ's gone in there and he said in the final press conference, he said, I've got a win. I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to do things that um, I didn't do in the first fight. So it's going to be interesting to see how AJ goes about it. But ST, in terms of Usyk, right, I mean, what, well, first of all, wow to the first fight in the way how he absolutely dominated that. And we saw the, the skill set that Usyk has as, as, uh, as well as the boxing brain. From his perspective, is it just normal service resumes? I just do what I did in the first fight and that gets me to where I'm going to get to? Or is he smarter than that and he knows that this is going to be a completely different fight to the, what the first fight was? Um, I want to say complete. I think I personally think AJ will be better in this fight. Um, I think he'll have to be slightly more better. I think um, one thing, the only thing I'll criticize 
Usyk at that day is because, as you said, he got marked. It's not because of his footwork; his head movement wasn't the best. Because uh, Usyk relies so much on his footwork to be elusive and pivot on his left foot, he doesn't need to um, use as much head movement. But he was still getting touched, and you said his face was getting marked. So one thing I would say is improved was, uh, you know. You know, move your head with the jab, you know what I mean? Like, he was getting touched with the jab. Even mm. though AJ wasn't putting power into it, he was still getting kind of touched. So my thing is, um, try and slip the punch, but with your head. So you don't need to be taking as much punishment, not only with your feet. And the feet is important, but, yeah, the head movement. But apart from that, bro, um, if, you, if um, time is jab, stay out of range, pivot on your left foot and keep moving around the ring. Also... I would say as well, when he gets inside the pocket, because he's not as fast as, I mean, he's faster than Joshua. You, you, I think he's quite, he's bigger now. I think he's putting a little bit of muscle. You can sit down a little bit on their punches because I see, because he wasn't really sitting down being spiteful on his punches and you're still hurting AJ. There mm. is always a chance you'll hurt AJ. So if he gets the chance, that's if he gets the chance, you know what I mean? Sit on your punches a little bit if you get the chance, you know what I mean? Hurt him, make him respect your power, you know what I mean? So he doesn't walk forward. No, nah, this is it. And he did, to be fair, to be fair to, to Usyk, he did hurt him. I think he hurt AJ in the third. I think towards the end of the fight, like it looked like yeah. AJ could um, could be out of it. But I think the one, to, I think the, in the third, I think that made AJ realise that, hey, okay, this guy's got some power about him. I think it was Tony Bellew that said that um, in the press conference when they fought, I know it was at Cruiserweight, but when they fought and he said, yeah, Usyk's got no punching power and he ended up flat on his back. Yeah. So I think people underestimate the amount of punching power that Usyk gets. He's not a one-punch knockout artist, but you have to respect his power. And I think the one in the third made AJ realise, yo, like, this guy can bang. I think towards the end of the fight, it was fatigue and all the rest of it. And when you're yeah. tired, it's going to hurt more. Um, but in terms of Usyk being bigger, is that a positive or a negative in your eyes? Because it can be a positive, he's he's getting bigger, so he, it may look like he's going for the knockout, um, a little bit um, like what uh, Tyson Fury did against Wilder, um, in terms of uh, getting bigger, putting on more muscle so that he could go for the knockout. Is it a positive or is it a negative? Because with that, with being bigger, it may slow him down and his footwork might not be as quick and he might not as be as elusive as he once was. Which 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 camp are you in, ST? Um, you know what? I think it's, for me, I would have preferred him to be as light or if he's going to be heavier, probably like five pounds heavier. Or 10, just so he still remains his footwork because with him, he relies on a lot on his footwork to not be touched. Whereas... Unless they've seen something like what Fury did with Wilder, where, for example, um, I think Fury hurt Wilder in the first match in the 12th round, mm. um, where he thought, OK, yeah, I can hurt this guy. I think, obviously, Usyk's seen this, that he thinks he can. I think he really thinks he can hurt Joshua and get him out of there. I, for me, I would prefer him to still be relatively light, you know what I mean? Just because his footwork is his biggest attribute, one of his biggest attributes. But at the end of the day, we don't know what he's got in store for him. You know what I mean? Like, he could literally go for the knockout. You never know. And this is it. I think it will be something that will be unexpected. But if he does come in heavier on the scales, and, and obviously by looking at him, we can see he's bigger, but might not be much on the scales. But if he does come in significantly heavier, you, we can both say that, OK, this guy's look like he's really going for the knockout here. He's trying to make a statement. He's basically coming to say, look, I outboxed him in the first fight and I won on points, but this time there's going to be no doubt about it. I am going to put him to sleep. And that could be the mindset that Usyk and his camp are having, that this guy's chin is suspect. And I think we can we can literally put this guy lights out. So it's, it's an interesting standpoint. But when we come to AJ, right, it seems like, and I know... I know people do this all the time and it's not necessarily the case, but it seems like this could be now or never for him, right? If AJ loses this fight, ST, mm. is he done in heavyweight boxing? I wouldn't say he's done. He's he would have, If he does lose his fight, he would have only lost three fights. Um, at the end of the day, it's, in, in the grand scheme of things, 
it's not a lot of fights you've lost. However, he'd have to go back to the drawing board, you know what I mean? He'd have to um, fight slightly lower opposition until he builds himself back. I think I've said this um, before. Like, I do feel like um, if Joshua does, uh, Joshua, even if he had lost this match, I would have thought like he's because he's always been fast tracked and then on the high job. He I don't think he's had properly had time to hone his skills. It's mm. just been upwards tra- trajectory. I think what he needs to do is like um, for me, he needs to work on his technique, but. Uh, and then fight the top guys. However, it's not going to happen because Eddie Hearn's putting him with these killers and Joshua himself, you, you'll be up for all those fights. Like, he wants the biggest names. He wants to be the best in the, in the division. And we all know, like, once those belts go straight, it's very, very difficult to get them back, especially in the heavyweight division because um, we, don't, we have a lot of networks that w- won't um, um, fight each other. You know, you have a lot, of, like, PBC will have their fighters fighting each other. Boxing politics. Boxing politics is very, very, very difficult. Mm. And Joshua will still want to be controlling the narrative of the heavyweight division and will have a stake in it. So um, while I do think if he does lose, he does go back to the drawing board, it would benefit him. I don't think he will. I think he will. Um, I don't think he will, but I still think he won't retire. I think he's still relatively young in the sense of heavyweight boxing for him to retire. I think he'll still come back, you know what I mean? I mean, so for example, Wilder's coming back from him. Wilder's a lot older and less fresher than him, so. And it's good that you mentioned Wilder because if AJ does lose, that is a fight that could happen. And that's a massive fight. That's a fight for him to get motivated for. Um, also, Dillian White, the third fight with Dillian White, that's something to get motivated for. But I can't see AJ getting for motivated for, for a Joe Joyce no. or a Daniel Dubois or something along those lines. Or so, Hergovich or them guys. Yeah, yeah, and any of these guys. So I think this is massive because the thing is, if he if AJ were to win, we know what happens next. Tyson Fury comes out of retirement because we know that's the fight that he wants. And then we get it for all the belts. And we get an undisputed heavyweight champion of which the world, which is what which is what what we want. It's what I listen. I I wouldn't want anything else. I want an undisputed uh, undisputed something. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's so, happening more in boxing now. You know, uh, Charlo's got undisputed in his weight class. Um, obviously, Usyk was at cruiserweight. It was uh, Crawford was a time up to the now it's between Spence and Crawford in the world weight division, which needs David, to happen. Which needs to happen, David Haney in his mm. division. Mm. No, so mean, it's like, happening more and more, yeah, but yeah. It, we need an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. We haven't had one since Lennox. Yeah. We haven't had one since Lennox. That's ridiculous in heavyweight boxing. Um, so the 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 the, 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 the gold standard, the, the 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 what is it? What am I looking for? The the golden part at the end of the rainbow. That is Tyson Fury. So that's why he has to win. But if he yeah. doesn't. I still don't think he should retire because while I listen, Wilder versus AJ is still a it's massive a fight. fight. Yes, yeah, huge fight. It's a massive fight. It's a fight that people want to see because that right there is a retirement fight for one of those two after. So whilst Usyk in, tries to get Fury out of retirement or Usyk goes to fight whatever mandatories he has, that is a fight that could definitely happen. Just as Dillian White versus AJ3. I think Dillian White's called him out and said that he wants to fight him next, regardless of the outcome. Don't think he's going to get it if AJ wins because <laughs> Dillian White had his shot and he didn't turn up. Um, mm-hmm. But it's all interesting. It's all interesting. Win or lose, it's all interesting for AJ and all interesting for Usyk. But I think retirement would be sad to see and I think it would be a little bit ridiculous. But at the same time, I can fully understand if he did, because it's like he's made it's, so much. Yeah, he's, he's made, made so much. He's, he's, he's made so much of the sport. He's been the face of the sport. Does he have the mentality to come back from back to back losses? Does he have that mentality? Because Yusuf isn't going anywhere. I mean, this guy. Listen, the mentality of this man. This man won the belts. Went to war, right in Ukraine guns and all to fight the Russians and the man said all right 
hold my gun. I'll be back after I go and beat up AJ again. That's what Usyk is on, bruv. Like, and, Usyk, and people don't realize, yeah, in in his cruiserweight like um, reign, yeah, this guy went to everybody's backyard, everybody's backyard, and won. I'm one. For everybody, didn't even care. This guy, Olympic gold medalist. I, I knew of him like when I when he was ages ago beating everybody, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's the thing, ST. Sorry to cut you off. The pedigree, on, the pedigree that the pedigree that Usyk has. Look, and, and this is this is this is the issue. This is one of probably one of the biggest issues for AJ is that obviously he he was an Olympic gold medalist, but he didn't have the amateur career. And we know with especially with the Eastern Europeans and that amateur career, that's where they develop their head movement. The, the footwork, the, the cutting off the ring, the jab, everything that AJ struggles with, Usyk has. And this is why it is so difficult to predict anything but an Usyk win. But at the same time, if AJ does overcome and win, that just proves to everybody, becomes three time a heavyweight champion in the world, that this guy is the real deal because whenever he's had adversity he's come back from it so there's so much to be gained and there's so much to be lost from this fight sorry bro that's all right man put it this way yeah if aj wins this yeah man listen i'm not chatting about him again even if he lose to fury bro i'll be like listen bro i respect you because you that is a because you six a difficult fight for anybody Mm-hmm. Anybody, and I'm telling you, a lot of heavyweights are gonna struggle with him if they because if you're fleet of foot, any smaller guys like even Fury, the Fury, Fury's hardest opponents was Fury was Cunningham because Cunningham, what happened, one of them was was outboxing him mm. until Fury did what AJ should have done with Usyk in the first match and said, "Fuck it, I'm not, I'm not boxing him." Mm. I'm just going to punch him up. I'm going to stand and punch him up, walk him down and all this nonsense and beat him up. But Fury was struggling. I mean, Fury's a better fighter now than he was. Yeah, back then, yeah. Then, yeah. yeah but the big guys, it's the small cruiserweight because they're so quick. They will cause you a lot of problems. And yeah, man, if Joshua is to beat Usyk, man, listen, I'm giving this guy very big credit because this is not an easy fight for anybody. He's unbeaten. Unbeaten, and, and he's unbeaten. Been unbeaten for a long time, amateur and um and pro, and mm-hmm. he's fought the best guys and made them look ordinary. This is it. This is it. This is this is the threat that AJ has against him, and obviously, people beforehand didn't respect Usyk. They respect him now. So, St. Going into this fight what game plan does AJ have to have to beat this man what you are obviously the boxing guru you are Robert Garcia what are you telling AJ to do to win this fight I'm telling um, AJ first of all establish the jab you are the bigger man make him feel your power make him feel the jab first of all Secondly, I'm not boxing with this guy. You think I'm boxing with this? Listen, I'm telling you, hands up, walk through, cut the ring off, beat him up, punch him to the shoulders, make it uncomfortable for him. You know what I mean? Like, don't allow him to d- d- dictate the distance. That's one thing I would say to him. Edu- if, you know what? If um, The perfect thing for AJ would be a crunk style um, fight as what Fury is with Sugar Hill. That is the coach's, that would be the perfect thing, um, game plan. Educated um, pressure fighting, even though I don't think Joshua's technically that great for it, but I think he's got some other attributes that he can learn from. It. That's the way you should be doing it, like pressure. No respect. For example, like what Maidana did with Mayweather, even though Mayweather overcame, overcome, overcame the fight and won it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. won both fights, at, for little bits of the fight, a lot of the fights and Mayweather was uncomfortable. That's what you have to do. You can't like stuff like that. You can't just um let him off the hook. You have to make it uncomfortable for him. Don't give him any respect in the ring. That's what it is. Like he gave um Usyk a lot of respect in that ring the other day, but don't give him respect. Hit him to the body. 
slow him down. Keep going to the body, jab upstairs. You know what I mean? But not a flicking jab. Solid ramrod, like Golovkin style jab. Mm. And also, if he moves, use the uppercut, mix it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like that. That's and, uh, a shot that he doesn't. He's so effective, but he rarely uses. Yeah. So that's what I would say the game plan would be for him. No, a hundred. I hear that. And listen, I I don't disagree with that. The, uh, the pro- only problem I have with that is ST. If Usyk's still there after round six and seven, that then that style then becomes the problem because we know AJ's tank can't handle it. So it's going to be interesting how they manage that because I think your game plan is spot on. It's how they manage it and how, if they can get Usyk out of there. Um, within the first six rounds, because I think I think they have to get him out within the first six rounds. Um, from an Usyk, Usyk perspective, me, I'm telling him, same as last time, just sit down on your punches more, trying to be a little bit more elusive, uh, work the body a little bit more. But apart from that, any, anything else, nothing. Because I feel, I feel, I feel like what, some people, what people don't talk about, um, which I think caused AJ a problem, was the fact that Usyk was a southpaw. And yeah. I don't know many southpaws that um, Joshua has come up against. So uh, Joshua has come up with a few southpaw, but they don't move like him. Yeah, they don't exactly. Um, Usyk's a different level southpaw, mm. uh, and Usyk would have come against fighters like Josh. Like, Usyk would have seen everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And Joshua's orthodox, so that's Usyk. He's used to that. Yeah, exactly, and. Your Yusuf, I mean, Yusuf is always big, um, fighting the bigger guys, so he's used exactly. to fight. He, he's sparred with Klitschko, he's sparred with Hargovic, he's sparred with all these top fighters, he's sparred with smaller ho- cruiser rates as well. Like, he mixes it up all the time. Like, like, That's the, he's good. Yeah, go on, could, go we, on. could we see AJ switch stance? Oh god, that would be so funny. But I don't I don't think he has a technique for that. Nah, he Gillian, doesn't. Gillian White tried it, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> no one knew why. I was like, didn't... when I saw it, I was like, oh bro. I don't hate Gillian. I like Gillian, but I'm just like, bro, this is like it's, come on, you man. know you know when you know when you just look at something, you just just, just don't just don't. Just, oh, just don't. I and like, I think, bro. I think if, if I think if AJ was to do it, I think we'd both be saying the same thing. Just don't. Just well, if he don't. does it, I'm like, you have no game plan. I was like, Robert Garcia hasn't taught you anything. This is this is it. Um, this is it. But ST, it's that time, bro. It's that time. Predictions. What are we saying? This fight. Who's winning? How they win? And what I, round are they winning? If I if keep, you're saying round, I keep going towards either use it decision or use it. Uh, KO uh, or stoppage, boy. I said decision, but I keep I keep changing decision. You know what? Fuck it. You said eleventh round. Fair. That's yeah. fair. Like I, I think U6 U6 game plan as well would be should be to drag it out for as long as possible as well. Um, ah. I, I, look, my head is saying AJ stops him in five. Oh, yeah, I hear you. It's possible. But my heart and what I'm going to go with is that Usyk stops stops him in eight. Fair enough. I think Usyk's going to stop him in eight. I think AJ is going to come out. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to establish the jab. He's going to make it uncomfortable. He's going to roughhouse um, Usyk and, and just make it a dog fight. I think he could even hurt Usyk and drop him um, once. But I think after after the third and fourth, when Usyk has collected all the data, I think that Usyk could take over this fight. And if he comes in as big as what we think he is, and he still has the movement and the um, um, dexterity, it's and the durability, I think Usyk takes over that fight and I think he hurts him bad and I think AJ by six and seven gasses out and he's there for the taking for Usyk and I, yeah, I think Usyk in eight, I think I think Usyk's going to stop him in eight, I think he'll hurt him in the seventh, drop him in the eighth I think that will be it, 
And then I think um, AJ is going to have to go down and fight Joe Ju- Joy Joyce. <laughs> I think he's going to have to go down and fight Joe Joyce, brother, and end their man there, bro. But look, for, in terms of undisputed heavyweight champion in the world, I want AJ to win um, for that Tyson Fury fight. Um, and for British boxing, it's hopeful that he wins. But yeah, yeah. you can't look past Usyk because, yes, AJ's fighting to become three-time heavyweight champion in the world. And, yes, he's looking at the bigger picture in terms of fighting Tyson Fury. But Usyk is not just fighting for himself. He's fighting for a nation and he's fighting for his country. And he knows if he wins that, he's going back to war as um, the unified heavyweight champion of the world. And, and that's that. And it settles it. And he's now um, knocked off probably the second biggest guy in the heavyweight division and then probably aiming for Tyson Fury after. Probably won't get it, but it and it would and it will just establish ST him as one of the boxing greats. Um yeah. one of those that had um undisputed cruiserweight heavyweight champion um unsuited cruiserweight champion of the world and then come to heavyweight beat AJ twice. Like that's listen, that's that's something to 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 yeah, to, to be so proud about and like he goes down as one of the greats um, in, in in boxing, but people, we shall watch this space. We shall see what happens between Usyk and AJ. As we said, people coming up this Saturday, make sure you watch it. It is going to be an absolute madness, and I think just as entertaining as the fir- and um, unpredictable as the first fight was, I think this one is going to be the same st quickly we're not going to go into it too much because we will have a show on it but obviously we found out that (sighs) eubank jr and connor ben are fighting in october bro just like just briefly give me your thoughts of that fight because for me i just think that it's a bunch of nonsense but at the end of the day these guys are trying to make their money so it makes sense. But in terms of, of a boxing perspective, I just think it's nonsense, bro. Yeah, in terms of boxing, like, obviously it makes sense for money, like, it sells, like, the bank, the new bank and Ben name and stuff like that. I just think Connie Ben's just going to get beaten up, man. It's, I'll be honest, like, Connor Ben isn't the best boxer. It means oh, he thinks he, he thinks he's the best thing ever. Nah. And don't get me wrong. I know a lot of boxers out there that think they're the best thing ever, but this guy's talking. But no, but he's talking like he's for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has okay. He, he has he fought people out there primes like Algeri. Algeri doesn't punch hard, you know what I mean? Van Heerden and them man there, they're not really the best. You get me? Like Eubanks fought better opposition, and Eubanks mm. is the better. He's just bit bigger and better than him. Like, let's be real, like. Like Conor Gunn is just gonna get beaten up, man. And like, we know, we, we know it's that catch where was it? Is it one fifty five? One fifty seven. One fifty seven. One fifty seven. So, what's, what's middleweight? Uh, what's middleweight? One sixty two. One sixty. Yeah. One sixty. Oh, is it one sixty? So it's three yeah, pound yeah, yeah. less for, and then Conor's putting on what twelve pounds? Uh, he's one forty five, isn't it? One forty seven. So. Oh, one forty seven. You're, you're thinking of the amateurs. Oh, Those yeah. are the amateurs, yeah. So yeah, so one forty-seven. Yeah. So he's still having to pick, put on yeah. ten pounds, which in the grand scheme of things, you wouldn't say as much. But in terms of boxing, like that's a big gap, bro. You yeah. got a welterweight up against a guy that's a middleweight who's boxed that super middleweight. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it doesn't make sense. It's unfair. And but if, listen, at the end of the day, like after what both their dads went through and and what their both their dads gave us in boxing because we love that like that made sense like that was brilliant um and obviously we were young back it. then any of you youngers yeah. that are watching you'll never I was, remember I, it I was, just I was even it. born i think i was i was just about born that time when was that then, when, when, when was the first one 1993 four something oh like yeah that. yeah no, i, I was might born be wrong then. sorry um people i might be wrong but this is yeah uh, we were all very remember. young Right, we were we were very young, very young. Yeah, I might not look it because of the beard, but I was young. I um, hear it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I yeah, so it. like after what their dads did, but I just think it's all right. Money making, yeah, cool. Don't get me wrong. If Conor Ben were to win this fight, it puts his name up there. It gives him clout. If 
Eubank Jr. wins, it doesn't really do anything it for him at but all. It's just, uh, just him earning money and getting the cobwebs out for me personally. And obviously, it'll be good. It'll look good for his name and stuff like that, for the family name. But it's not really anything. Eubank Jr. has been saying he wants world titles. Unfortunately, um, for example, um, um, Golovkin's obviously facing Canelo. Mm. I'm not sure what Demetrius Andrade is is doing at the moment. Mm. Charlo, I'm not sure as well. I mean, I don't know what he's doing at the moment. So, I guess this is a stay busy fight for him. I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. People, if we if we can be bothered, we might do something on it. If we can't, then we won't. It is what it is, man. That it's is what it is. It's one of them. Yeah. One of them fights, but um. People, let us know what you think in the comment section. Let us know what you think about AJ and Usyk. Who's going to win? What round are you predicting? Um, is it KO? Is it points? Is it draw? Can someone who wants to put draw in there? Someone put a, a lot of money if it's draw. Oh yeah, yeah you'll definitely win yeah. a lot of money yeah. if, it's, if if it's a draw. Um, let us know what you think about Conor Ben and Eubank Jr. Uh, is it a nonsense fight? Are you actually excited for it? Will it get the clout that people think it will? Um, people we want to hear from you and as usual before we go make sure to like share comment and subscribe to the channel get a like get the subscriptions up and say all the time share 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 we are here and don't forget to join our social media pages as well links up in the description uh, i want to say thank you very much to my guy st as usual thank you very much sir thank you very much bro uh, um people coming up for your chat will be back this week um uh, no fight talk unfortunately two is busy um so we'll try and get him on next week to do a review show obviously box and talk review will be happen as well, happening as well um uh, i think that is it for now in terms of shows um but people as usual stay safe be safe out there and we shall see you very very soon peace peace